Okay, so let's start with the idea of loneliness. So like, how do we understand if you feel emotionally isolated or lonely, like even if you know people, like what's going on there? The first thing to understand is if you're around people and you feel lonely, it's because the part of you that connects to them is not the real you. It's the mask that you put on, right? That's why you feel disconnected because there are all these people around, but they don't actually get to see the real you. They get to see a version of you. And so how can you feel connected when all you show people is a piece of who you are? And so then that begets the question, why do we have masks on in the first place? Right? Why do we like adopt this system of like putting on a particular mask? And that's because for some reason or another, we're afraid of what people will do if we don't have the mask. The mask comes because we lack confidence in who we are as a person. There's something on the inside that I don't want people to see. And the solution here is not like, oh, go get confident, man. You're beautiful on the inside. No. The reason that you lack confidence in who you are on the inside is because that's what you've learned. It's not like you just need to get confident. It's because something happened which taught you very clearly that when people see what's on the inside, it's not worth associating with. And that's why you put on the mask. And then you can discover something really, really dangerous which is that when you put on the mask, things get better for you, right? Because when you hide who you are on the inside, people treat you better. You become nicer. Sometimes you become a doormat. You do things for other people. You're always down for this. You're a lot of fun. You borrow, you let people borrow money and you don't ask for it back. You become all kinds of things to make the world like you and to make the world an easier place to navigate. And then why would you want to be what you are on the inside where people like aren't your friend when you can be what they like and then they are your friend? And so we discover that the mask actually has a lot of value. It actually helps us move forward in a way that, you know, being your authentic self doesn't. But even though it gives you kind of lots of friends and you can hang out with people and you get invited to places and stuff like that, you're not letting people see who you are on the inside, so you're emotionally isolating yourself. The more successful the mask is, the more alone you feel. And that's the damnedest thing because the mask is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to get you invited to places and people texting you and stuff like that. You think it's the antidote to loneliness because it's increasing the number of interactions. And yet you become more and more isolated. So what do you do about that? It's hard, right? So we can start with this idea like, oh, you should accept yourself for who you truly are, bro, and live a life of authenticity. And like all this other, you know, like feel good, positive kind of stuff. But practically, how do you do that? The first thing is to understand that there is a part of you that you were afraid of people seeing. And it's going to be hard, but you actually have to like show it to some people. Right? You should be your authentic self. And recognize that as you try to be your authentic self, there's going to be a part of your mind that rebels. And says, if you say this, or you open your mouth, or you be like, you know, who you really are, if you tell a friend of yours that, hey, it kind of pisses you off that you pick them, you drop them off at the airport all the time when they have a flight, but they never drop you off because it could rupture your relationship. But it's authentic. And you have to recognize that as you start to become your authentic self, you can get rejected. And you have to have the courage to face that. You have to acknowledge that, okay, this is going to be terrifying, but I'm going to do it. You have to be willing to lose because the mask is about playing a game that you can't lose. And by playing the game that you can't lose, you end up never winning because you're not putting it on the table. You're not actually risking anything. And so something magical happens. It's hard. Don't get me wrong. So notice all those things like when you start to you know, say something that maybe people will rub the wrong way. Or, I mean, I'm not telling you guys to go out and be an asshole, but like the other thing that could happen is like maybe you want to be vulnerable with someone. Right? You can say, hey, like I'm afraid that I'm going to be alone forever. And when you disclose that kind of thing, you're going to feel pathetic. 
And so when you try, you recognize that there's going to be a part of you that's like, don't take, don't take off the mask. Don't take off the mask. People won't like what they see. And this is the really damn the, the, uh, annoying thing is that your impression that they don't like what they are going to see is actually like sort of an incomplete picture and somewhat false. Because that's the bottled up emotion. That's the sense of lack of value that you have in the first place in yourself, which causes you to misjudge. It's the insecurity itself that's speaking. There's a difference between people not liking you and you believing that people aren't going to like you. And that belief starts to control your actions. And the more that you put on the mask, the less that you let people see, the more that belief gets reinforced. Because then what are you showing yourself? You're showing yourself, oh, by the way, when I don't be my real self, people like me a lot. Therefore, my real self isn't worth liking because they like my false self. So every day that you put on the mask, you reinforce this idea that you're not worth liking. Because they love the mask. Why would they like you? The thing is, though, it's all built on a house of cards. It's usually built on one experience or a handful of experiences what we call some scars. So these are balls of undigested emotion. They're rejections or experiences of hurt where like you felt like you were not a good person or that people like, you know, made you feel like you're not worth it. And then you carry that basic thing with you and then it starts to grow in your mind. And every day that you put on the mask, it grows bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. But something magical will happen if you start to take off the mask little by little. You know, find the right place, find the right person, try to take off the mask and see what happens. The more you take it off, and you'll be amazed because actually people aren't going to reject you the way that you think they are. And then you're going to be like, oh, actually, I don't have to wear the mask all the time. You're going to feel connected. You're going to open up a little bit more. You're going to open up a little bit more. And then you'll start to realize that what I am on the inside may not be perfect, but it doesn't have to be rejected. And then you can start to turn things around. Because if we think about confidence in yourself, we think about security and who you are. Security isn't about being perfect, right? Security is about being flawed and accepted anyway. That's what it means to be secure in yourself because no one's perfect. And this is the tricky thing about insecurity is that there are a lot of people out there who try to fix their insecurity with perfection. So what they do is they like, I'm insecure that I don't look good, so I'm going to dress very, very carefully. And if I can dress perfectly, then people are going to think that like I'm an okay-looking dude. And that's a real dangerous thing, because if I dress perfectly and I go out, and then like no one's like, hey man, you're ugly, then I start to think that I have to dress this way in order to be accepted. And what it actually does is feed the insecurity. Because then I begin to think that People's acceptance of me is dependent on how I dress. And therein is the nature of insecurity. That's someone who's insecure. They have to dress a certain way, otherwise they're not worth anything. Crazy. So how do you start? You start by noticing the insecurity. You start by noticing the lack of value. You start by noticing that there is a part of yourself that is terrified to let other people see. That's the beginning. Then what you do is you put your toes in the water. You see what happens. It takes a lot of courage, but you have to take the mask off a little bit by a little bit. And then something crazy is going to happen. Some people are going to reject you and some people are going to accept you. And the more you let people accept you, because right now the problem is that you're not even letting people accept you. The only opportunity you're giving the rest of the world is to accept a version of yourself, a false version of yourself. And so how can you ever gain security? You've got to give them a shot. And the more that you give people the opportunity to accept you, the greater the chances are that you will actually be accepted. I know it sounds like rocket science. It's crazy. Giving people a chance to accept you is how you get accepted. But that requires courage. It requires difficulty and it requires noticing. So if you feel emotionally isolated, Recognize that it is the very things that you use to protect yourself that are the things that are isolating you. Here you are building a ton of walls so that people don't see the real you, and you're crying because you're on the inside all alone. 
The very solutions that you create to fix your problems are the problems themselves. And the more that you understand this, the more free you'll be. The more in control you will be. Because what is freedom? It's about, I can't control what other people like me. Like, you're right, but it's sort of like you're, you're giving in to like that paradigm. And so if you want to be in control of your life, take a chance. Control isn't about outcomes. It's about choices. Right? You can't control what happens when you ask someone out. But when you never ask anyone out, you feel out of control in your life. And what you try to do is control for perfection. You try to make them say yes. And all that thing just feeds into your insecurity. So I hope that was helpful. It's kind of bizarre. Um, there's a lot there. And, you know, work on yourselves. The last thing is that that meditation practice that we did can be really, really helpful at helping you understand, you know, what is you and what is the outside world and to learn to separate those two things. Because a lot of insecurity comes when someone looks at something in the outside world and attributes it to their sense of self. I asked one person out, they said no, therefore I am an incel and I will always be alone. You never bothered to learn that they're like actually not interested in you because they're attracted to a different gender. But that somehow becomes your fault. You take the outside world and you bring it into yourself. And you are the responsible agent. So the meditation practice of focusing on the object of your senses versus the sense of yourself helps you navigate that continuum between yourself and the outside world. And the more you begin to realize that, the more you'll stop attributing things that are not your fault to yourself. If you guys want help with all this stuff, you know, we have, um, that's what our coaches are there for. So I think you guys can, you know, learn these principles and stuff, do the meditation. We hope it helps. If you guys want some help, if you want some support, if you want some assistance, you're welcome to work with our coaches. They try to help you guys understand these kinds of patterns and stuff about yourself. If you guys are interested, you can also sign up for groups. So the cool thing about groups is that you're going to be working on, you guys will be surprised at how much you share with other people. And I know that a lot of people think that, oh, like, you know, I have my own problems and like, I won't be able to relate with to anyone. Or a lot of times the reason people don't sign up for groups is because they, they're afraid they're going to bring the group down or that they won't mesh with the group. And the cool thing about groups is that the whole reason that like Healthy Gamer is a thing is because a conversation with one person actually applies to thousands of other people. And so you guys will be surprised at how much you share with other people. And the fact that you share it is in and of itself incredibly powerful. Because when you get into a group of seven other people who feel emotionally isolated and you guys all talk about how emotionally isolated you, you are, I don't know if you guys get this, but like that's a very powerful antidote to emotional isolation. So check out our coaching program if you guys are looking for a little bit of help.